All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in the house with a Sharp by Design Brian Nado Custom Knife Void XLNF here with me for a review. We can analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this bad boy, but first of all, don't forget to like the video. Second of all, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already and uh, you know what, leave me a comment down below, let me know what you guys think about this fella right over here because this is a pretty cool knife. This guy comes uh, with this um, kind of like Pelican case. It's not Pelican, but it's similar. It's like a hard case uh, with some uh, rubber gasket going on over here, padded. Uh, there's no certificate of authenticity, but it's uh, always good to have uh, uh, maker's information and a hard case uh, uh, to uh, carry and store your knife, which in this case is the beautiful Void by Brian Nado. This is a custom version. It is the non-flipper version, and it's one of four uh, made of this fella right over here. Really, really a cool one, actually, one of my favorite uh, knives right now. Uh, made in the US, uh, this guy is uh Beautiful, look at that. Let's quickly check the size first uh, because we have a 3.75 inch long uh, cutting edge and 4.75 inch long handle which contributes to reach 8 point probably 4 inches of the overall length uh, and if we check this bad boy up against Benchmade bug out and mini bug out, it's gonna give you a clearer idea of uh, the size of this guy. It's not a small knife, but feels kind of small in the hand. I mean, it's uh, look at this, for example, that's Spyderco Paramilitary 2, and this is the Para 3. So it's kind of like as big as a Para uh, Military 2, but Look at the cutting edge and the, the shape and everything. It contributes to have uh, a feel of a smaller knife in the hand. And here you get uh, Chris Reeve knives, small Sebenza 21 and large Sebenza 21 to give you an idea of this, uh, uh, of where this guy stands in uh, size comparison. Pretty much we are in the same realm of the large Sebenza uh, 21. North Arm Knives Skaha 2, beautiful one, and uh, XM18 uh, Hinder Knives, uh, this is a great one. Uh, check this out, a little bit smaller than the Void, uh, Void definitely bigger than the Skaha. Here is the Snafu 3.0 by Custom Knife Factory, designed by Peter Rassenti, and uh, uh, it's tiny bit smaller than that. Another similar design is this uh, Arius by Koenig Knives, uh, and uh, you can see it is pretty much uh, in the same realm of the void. Here we have uh, uh, Shilgok of Custom Division Stellar to complete the picture with the uh, 111 to show you like a big boy and something like pretty much in the same uh, in the same size, this is a very, very popular uh, size that I'm seeing lately and it's uh, it's, it's a good thing because this is a great size. It's uh, sub nine inches. It's, uh, guys, look at this. Brian Nadeau Void XL NF uh, Titanium Frame Lock uh, Custom Knife, one of four. It is a gorgeous one. I, I mean, look at this. Look at these lines. So this guy, I think it's gonna run you around 14, 1500 bucks on the secondary market if you can find one because it's a pretty rare uh, beast, this one. And uh, it's it's just beautiful. I kind of like a lot this one. I mean, the, uh, the overall shape uh, kind of reminds me of the Arius, like vaguely, but it's nicer. Like for example, you can see, I mean, there's some similarities, of course, like here is all belly, here you have belly like that, and the handle is like shaped very differently, but I see some similarities like big, bigger fuller, like sinews handle, but look at the cutting, uh, look at the handle to blade ratio, because we're pretty much in the same size, but look at the handle to blade ratio, look at the cutting edge uh, of these two fellas. So uh, this guy is uh, uh, impressive. I like it very much. Made in the US, uh, has some very sinuous lines. Like I like very much this cut out here in the blade, which just 
disappears like inside and it just creates a very nice uh, area uh, over here to uh, use your index your middle like your thumb it's just uh, just pretty pretty cool it's a titanium frame lock uh, with some very cool uh, checkered checkered pattern uh, milled into this uh, full uh, inlay as you can see right over here and a very very tiny pinstripe pattern uh, going on on the other area put on that 4k uh, video mode to appreciate all these details guys look at this that's uh, that's a very fine attention to the details and uh, you can see that these scales are 3d milled and nicely finely stonewashed uh, the raw titanium shows beautifully in this uh, outline inlay and also shows beautifully right over here all around the perimeter there is some nice and satin accent going on right before the internal chamfering that you see all around the blade and on the inside actually you see that there is no internal skeletonization going on only this wide and soft and sinuous groove that is gonna allocate easily two of your fingers of the right hand or like if you're lefty of course uh, but great great scales uh, nicely uh, 3d milled uh, for sure and then you get like a nice uh, uh, backspacer it is in titanium it is blasted uh, so kind of like matching the internal of this uh, um, um, yeah I said this is like stone wash but it's kind of like blasted actually it's not really stone wash so sorry guys um, it's uh, it's matching, of course, these areas over here, um, and uh, it's kind of like floating, as you can see. There's washer, so it's not really uh, touching the scales, uh, but it is centering. So you can see that the blade is like absolutely centered uh, right over there, and it's protecting the tip of the blade, uh, so you're not gonna be able to snag it because it's like buried down there. Look at that thing very very precise indeed um overall i mean the look is like super classy i love this clean lines a hundred percent you get a simple construction here but look at that you get a spanner a uh, bit needed to uh take this guy apart i'm not sure if the uh, uh, pivot is spinning but you do have that uh, t8 torx bit only uh, screw uh, holding the um, handle together like uh, it passing through and holding the clip as well so it's pretty simple construction I'm assuming the disassembly is gonna be pretty straightforward also you do get uh, some nice uh, and oversized uh, stainless steel lock face insert uh, screwed in from the outside with an integrated lock bar stabilizer that you can actually see and appreciate like from this angle right there so that is very very good you do have also very interesting uh, uh, detent system which is triangular it's not a ball and it has like a an integrated uh, ball ramp kind of like something uh, for example you see in uh, the haptic and in the specter so uh, it's it's a little bit different but the idea is the same um so that is, uh, you see, I was going for the flipper tab. Uh, that is uh, a pretty good idea. Uh, I don't know if uh, who patented uh, this first, but uh, for sure it's a it's genius idea. Let's say that. Um, also, you see, of course, like uh, you know, the lock bar is very well done. Look at the four inlay going on, also on the back, uh, and a very tiny uh, lock bar cut out, uh, which is external in this case. Uh, you get a very, and I say very beautifully designed uh, pocket clip. There's lots of tension going on, so it's going to be quite uh, tough to get this guy into the pocket. But once it's there, it's just going to stay there. Sinews exiting ramp, deep carry pocket clip this much knife is gonna be sticking out from your pocket um, I like the satin uh, edges over here and the blasted center I love the fact that this is a hidden hardware just screwed in from this side it's not rever reversible uh, it's tip up carry only and uh, it's just gonna be staying there so that's pretty nice and then guys you get this blade which is pretty pretty cool I mean um, 
it's very well designed. Uh, you have the right amount of jimping, kind of like reminds me the one of a Nirvana, but it's less aggressive. And you do get uh, some, uh, you see the chamfering going on around the jimping and just stopping right over here where the swedge start. But this swedge is just not like a flat swedge. Like for example, I don't know, something you find right over here, you see, just flat. No, this is concave, this is rounded, like it's hollow, like it's hollow, the primary bevel over here and that creates like a added like penetrability of this tip is just like gorgeously done and you get 100% belly up to the uh, sharpening choil dual tone blade you get satin flats and uh, this is kind of like a light stone wash finish it's it's very hard to say I don't know if it's in between between uh, stone wash it's kind of like stone wash but but very very finely done of course this uh, uh, huge cutout has uh, some nice chamfer but at the same time retains uh, a little bit of grippiness because if you want to do this you'd need a little bit of bite into this of course you do not get any billboarding going on except for the Brian Nado logo right here in the back uh, and uh, you just get this beautiful, gorgeous, hollow grind, dual tone finish blade going on and appropriate uh, uh, sharpening choil. Let's quickly check the uh, size uh, of this stock. This point over here is gonna be 0.161 uh, and right behind the edge, let's say at this height, uh, it's gonna be 0 0.02. Um, so it, it's nicely done, guys. This is a pretty, pretty cool blade, I am telling you. Uh, I love it. Very, very serious design. Also, what I really appreciate is the sound because it has a dual um, nature. Like, look at this. When you uh, deploy, you get a deep clack. When you close it, you get a tiny clink. Deep clack and clink. So high-pitched closing but subdued sound. When you open it up, it's clack, it's deep, it's not loud, but this is gorgeous. This is very, very unique uh, closing sound, 100%. Let's quickly check how much this guy is gonna be waiting in the pocket because uh, you don't have any internal skeletonization, so that's gonna reflect a little bit uh, uh, 4.53 ounces of weight in the pocket for this fella, not too shabby. What is also not too shabby is the ergonomics because they're really actually fantastic. There's nothing uh, sharp, everything has been taken care of uh, really with great uh, attention, zero hotspots from the clip, uh, no sharp edges, the jimping is absolutely functional very well done you can do a reverse grip easily you have enough room on the handle to uh, to, to, to grab it not really doing like a choke up grip because you don't have like a finger choil going on over here but you have uh, a pretty interesting fit and finish uh, and also like a very interesting uh, pattern going on and adding a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, texture, so it's uh, not that that slippery. It's it has some grippiness uh, to the handle for sure. And I was saying, you know, fit and finish just spectacular. Look at this centering going on over here. Look at the uh, tolerances for the floating backspacer. Really, really cool. There's nothing rattling. This is well put together, guys, I am telling you, and looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's no blade play, no finger soreness. Uh, when you deploy with the finger, um, like index finger, middle finger, the thumb, you can do the uh, ring finger. I can't really do the uh, pinky, but it's just, who cares? Just like this is probably the easiest one to do. Um, you also have some nice wa um, bearing, sorry, uh, running under the hood i still have to take this guy apart uh, to check the act to see if i can improve the action which is already good like deploying the deployment action is is very nice with uh, pretty much every finger and uh, the closing action you see is like a drop shot as soon as you disengage the lock bar like that um no uh, free falling effect. You just gotta have to wiggle a little bit to do that, but not a big deal. Uh, what is fantastic is the detent uh, strength. This guy has a very well dialed in detent. Just like, look at that, Flips uh, flicks open very nicely, reliably. It's uh, very well dialed in. I mean, guys, uh, overall, this is a gorgeous knife. I struggle to find uh, 
uh, defects probably. Uh, the area here to disengage the lock bar is not the best, but still it's doable. You can angle your thumb and just do it. I just love the pocket clip. I love the uh, this area over here is just gorgeous, guys. I love the fact that it's a non-flipper, uh, that you have uh, still a couple options with your thumb, like to flick it uh, or index or middle finger. It's gonna deploy uh, reliably all the time. Also has a great sound. The ergos are just spectacular. So this is a home run. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoy this video. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned.